Hi everyone, I'm back at Oakthorpe Brook today and if you watched my last video you'll have seen that I was at Oakthorpe Ponds and that's where I am now. This isn't the ponds, this is just a bit of a wetlands. We've had a, a lot of rain recently so I've come to have a look to see where the flooding is happening. Um, the landowner got in touch with me and said that the, they were suffering with flooding so I've come to have a bit of a look. And you might might recognize this bridge because this is where we were in the last video looking at the um, iron oxide in the water and you can see that the flood has washed it washed it away I suspect it's it's still sat underneath and when things settle down it'll resurface again you can see it's a bit orange there but I've not seen it this clear uh, since I've been working in the area as I started sort of just before summer and then it's soaking wet all the way down there as well so this is this is quite nice it's a bit of a, a wetlands but obviously it's caused um, by f by flooding and this is Oakthorpe Brook here we didn't walk down this far in the last video but you can see I mean it's about to burst its banks <clears throat> oh <laughs> it did it did burst its banks and this is this section of land is the landowner that I'm working with Oakthorpe Brook is such a straight river um, it doesn't look like it here but when things have died down it's so it's so straight all the way up there you can really see that there's quite a big current strong current sorry going in that direction I wonder if I can get over there and just see where it's going. Obviously not too close because it is a flood but the water's not flowing quickly. This is it, we're on the other side, that strong current's coming down here. That's flooding all the way along through there. this um, fence that you can see along here on the left hand side of it is the private landowners land um, they're obviously concerned that they are getting affected um, and it is quite a lot of water and it's going quite far down okay right let's let's carry on upstream just noticed it's coming all over the path here and this is another area this sort of section of grass here grass um just vegetation really um and it's full of himalayan balsam which i mentioned in my last video is an invasive species so i'm hoping to work with the derbyshire wildlife trust who own this section and see if we can make it sort of absorb a bit more water and um, so we don't keep ending up with this this bog just you know reflecting the path here <coughs> oh look gorgeous mushrooms Right now I'm a bit further upstream you can see we've got this weir here and we've got this land drainage ditch uh, sorry, land drainage pipe right there the, it drains water from the golf course which is to my right 
The landowner tells me that this pipe builds up quite a lot of velocity and it will shoot out enough water to hit the other side of the bank, which is going to be you know, quite a considerable amount of water. We've also, in, on the left hand bank, have got signs of water voles, which are a protected species in the UK. Um, so if this pipe is throwing out so much water that it's hitting the other side of the bank and potentially into the, the homes of the water voles, it's not really ideal. Um, I'm no expert on this matter at all. So if anyone's got any suggestions or any knowledge that might help reduce the, the volume, well, not so much the volume of water, but the velocity of the water, um, please let me know, please comment below. You can see the water's going really fast along here. And it's, not, it's obviously not helped by the weir. Weirs are not friends of fish because the fish obviously can't swim upstream where there's a weir. And I have reported this and someone's been out to see it as well to see if um, it can be amended in some way. I don't know if you can see there, that's the drainage pond for the golf course that takes all the runoff. There's a pipe there leading into the pond and then somewhere around there is the pipe coming out of the pond, taking any overflow out of the way and feeding it into that pipe we've just seen. Look at this, does anyone recognise this? This is where I unblocked in my last video. No stagnant orange now. It's flowing right the way through, looks like it's gone all up there as well. But making the water work harder. It's all broken up by the logs. flowing very quickly down here. Look at that. Looks like a leaf kebab. Okay, so water will travel the path of least resistance. So it's coming under the bridge. It's feeding off down here. It's partly going under this branch here, but it's also going round the back of it down there and then the pair of them meeting here and it's travelling down here and it's going up round that corner, it's making its own meander around there and it's also joined by this branch coming off here that's going down there and the original river is going this way and bending to the right down there. It's been three weeks since I was last here and you can see the water levels really drop now. I've hardly had any rain in that time um, so I thought I'd come back to this area and show you just exactly the the path flow of the river um, because it was too dark last time when I was here to show you um, and I couldn't, I couldn't really record it very well so I'm going to have a little look again now now that the water's dropped and it's a bit lighter so this is one of the entry points where the water was coming in and it was going all around this tree, around the back of there and all under this log and you can kind of see like there's almost a river of leaves going around like that, this is where the water was flowing and of course it was coming through there as well this is my my demonstration of natural flood management there it's not rained since I put that up so you know, 
uh, it was just a demonstration really um, to someone I was showing. But then the, the flow path goes down here. Oh, see, still a bit wet here. All down here, this little channel, and it's still wet. And this is, um, oh, oh gosh, I'm getting flicked by twigs. This is part of the problem for the um, landowner is that she doesn't mind the water using it as a floodplain as it is, but then the water isn't going away. And it sits here and it starts to smell. And it goes all under her boundary fence there. And it's over there. And uh, this is the deepest part here and then it all starts to rise and it all fills this area here. But you can see over there a little flow path. So I'm just going to hop the fence. I'm sure she won't mind. I'll show you where it goes. Oh, hop the fence. See the little channel all down here. And I think this is really exciting because when it is flooded, as you've seen in the previous clips, it looks like it's all just sat there. But it's not, it's making its own way out. You see, it's all it's all bending down there, it's wet there, all through there, all down here. It goes all through here. And you can see how, hopefully you can see, things have been flattened where the water's made its way through. And then it just generally seems to go a bit straight down here. You can see it's all flattened here. It seems to go two directions around there and then down sort of here can't really see as well now because a lot of leaves have fallen in that time. And here we are, look, back at the river. So it's made its own way back. It's just gone a long detour about it. This is all standstill as well. There's a small blockage there, but it'll all wash through in, in a, the next downpour. But I think that's really interesting that you, you can actually see the flow path and one suggestion is that you know follow the flow path make a bit of an incision in the ground and let the water drain drain out from where it's standstill back there so now that I've shown you the situation I want to know how you would deal with it uh, it's just for fun you know might take on some suggestions to the landowner but generally just for fun. I want you to answer two questions. What would you do to prevent the flooding or, or help ease the flooding? And then what would you do if you were the landowner as well? I My suggestions would be to prevent the flooding I would do natural flood management like I have done here and I'd put a leaky barrier there and, and that one there and I'd do a leaky barrier underneath the fencing over there and that would, I would still allow the water to come and use the floodplain as needed um, but not as, not as full on, um, re release the water slower um, so that's what I would do if I um, was trying to prevent or slow down the flooding I, I'd also follow the flood path as well, create a bit of an incision as I mentioned and help the water drain out from it just being standstill there. And if I was the landowner, 
Well, I think I would, I think I'd probably steal the river to be honest. <laughs> I would cut, cut an incision out in, in the land. And when I say an incision, I mean basically drag a pickaxe. I don't want anything too deep or too wide. I want the water to find its own way. But I would just follow the flow path, um, drag in like a pickaxe or something and just just embrace having a river through my land I think but that's me I want to know what your you would do if um, if you were the landowner or if you were trying to prevent the flood let me know comment below